Well, greetings, PCP friends. I am Michael, a.k.a. Moodlinite, and today we're going to be talking about the Yong Hen, Yong Hen um, compressor. And why, first of all, do we get a Yong Hen? Obviously, the price. It's about $250 to $350 if you get them either on eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, wherever you decide to find yours. And um, I'll be talking about the unit. And what do we charge up? Well, our air tanks, of course. So um, I have a... Uh, well, first of all, what we have on our paintball gun, it's um, a Ninja, 68 cubic inches. Um, I also have a um, more of a scuba tank. This is um, Iorman, I-O-R-M-A-N, off of um, Amazon. I've seen them elsewhere over on eBay. And this is a, I think it's about a 85 cubic feet, not cubic inches, <laughs> cubic feet. So it's a pretty good size. So um, the idea is that we're going to take our compressor, fill up our tanks, and um, then don't have to run the compressor all the time, or I've got the big tank that can fill up the smaller ones when you're out in the field. So, okay, some of the gear we have here. First off, um, there's a lot of other types of compressors you can get. You can get a... Um, a pyramid um, for about $1,300, the Air Venturi. Then for about $3,500, we've got some such as the Nuva Air. That's what they use at my paintball field. Pretty good commercial unit. Max Air. The Bauer is kind of the high end. I know that the scuba tankers, a lot of them use that one. That's around $4,000. And you can get them either electrically or gas operated if you need portable operation. This, obviously, is going to be a fixed operation. You're going to need to have power. And you can either get them at 110 or the 220 volt version. And the transformer inside is really a 220, but they just kind of make it um, by changing a couple leads on it. Say, okay, we'll use it for 110 volts. Now the North America power is 117 volts. And that is um, what it should be. But your mileage may vary if you have like small wires. Um, well, I've got like this LED light here, and I don't know if you can see this, but, um, you know, something like these. These are small lights. Now, this is the one actually that goes to the pump. You don't want to have a small gauge wire when you're going to your Yong Hen. Um, it uses the better part of 20 amps times 110 volts approximately. So you're using just about 20 watts, and that's about how big your circuit breaker is. So... I've actually got a watt meter. We can take a look at the wattage and the current as we get this going. But you want to have a good cord. You know, something like, I don't know if you can see this one, but um, it's a pretty good gauge cord about the size of my little pinky finger. And um, so something like that will make a big difference if you have like a 12, 14 gauge cable. If you've got like uh, maybe a 16, 18 gauge and you've got a 100 foot run, or like I had, I tried hooking up in my house and it turned out one of the connectors were not that good. When I went to turn it on, I could just hear the transformer humming on the um, coils. And I, was like, uh, and I was like, shut it off right away. I don't want to burn it up. It said I had 77 volts. It dropped down. It wasn't enough. So, yeah, I'm hooked up here in the garage. And I think we have good um, current availability. So that's something important for your prerequisites. Obviously, if you've got a hot day, um, this is going to be getting hot. That's going to make a difference. If you've got a day where it's very humid, that's going to make a difference. In fact, it's been raining here in January. 67% humidity, 59 degrees, so it's nice and cool, but it is um, pretty humid today. Now, I initially saw where somebody had put an um, extra desiccant filter on the input to this, and um, it turned out that was a no-go. The reason being was that uh, it didn't let enough air in. I was, couldn't figure, why am I not getting this compressor to go? It was hardly moving at all in terms of the PSI. So um, stick with your original factory air input. Can you see the the valve or the gauge broke something like the fluid leaked out of it um, kind of annoying they must use some pretty serious petrochemicals because the um, styrofoam is like welded to the to the 
chemicals in the plastic. That's just a nuisance, right? I mean, I could cut the cord off and put a different cord on, but you can also see a couple things. One, there's oil all over it. Um, like you can see in here, there's a bunch of oil. And then listen to this. Wait, wait, wait for it, here we go. There's something loose in there. I'll keep the thing for parts or whatever and just, I won't even, I won't even be able to test if it works by then, but um, I'll just keep it if you give me a $93 refund. So I pay $193 for it. So I'm into it now like it sits for um, $100 even. Um, water. Yeah, you need a source of water for this and of course oil. And so you're gonna, you know, come with the um, two tubes. You've got about a eighth of an inch on the input. Um, I don't know if it matters. It says that the bottom one is the um, input and the top one is the output. And they're gonna give you a little chintzy, I will call it chintzy water pump. That's, uh, I think it's like a five watt, um, gosh, doesn't have that many gallons per second. Not that much pressure, can you see that? The water is hardly going through at all. Now, if we had the water up above the height of the compressor, it's gonna go a lot faster. And no, it doesn't go faster as the compressor's on. That's not the way it works. So, um, yeah, we want more water flows. It doesn't have that many gallons, but um, I changed it. But before I talk about that, I've seen a lot of people make this mistake. In my case, I hope it's not a mistake. The water tank, you know, you put your water source five gallons down on the ground and you've got the compressor up higher. No, you, if you're going to just be using the standard pump, you want to have your water up here and your tank down there because believe it or not, just having a gravity feed with a small pump is not going to be enough. You're going to have very little water flow. Um, I've got, uh, rather than that five watt one that it comes with, I've got one that goes 200 to 600 gallons per hour. It's 25 watts. And so, yeah, I'm okay because I can pump uphill no problem. I'm going to go ahead and put in the pump right now, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, I had to go through a couple reducers to get it to the size that I needed. But as you can see, I've got plenty of water pressure now. Once I go through that eighth inch nipple to go into this system, it's not going to be quite as much as we'll take a look in a second. Okay, so it's going through and you can see that my water pressure has reduced substantially, but it's a heck of a lot more than if I had that five watt um, pump. So, um, yeah, I've got good flow. I do have a bag of ice in here, a one-gallon freezer bag. And why do I have it in a bag? Well, because I have purified water. Now, you can just go ahead and just use your regular water, and you're probably going to be fine. I have seen some people with their young hens that I guess they've had too much minerals in the water, and their check valve internally has gotten where it got corroded, um, and when that happens, then you're not going to be able to get the pressure you need to get your 4,000. Well, I could have used distilled water, but I thought, mm, after doing some reading on it, I thought not. Distilled water has all the minerals off it. And if you have nothing in, when the water goes through the filtration system, it can actually leach that minerals right off of the metals and start to deteriorate it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go with the purified water. I think there are about two um, cases... 12 um, bottles of like 12 ounces is about six dollars. I keep a lid on it so that um, It you know doesn't evaporate and I have had some additives. I put in it too. This one is a hyper cool super coolant Got about half of that bottle in and I thought well if one's good two's better And this one is from Royal Purple and it is called purple ice. It's supposed to bring your temperature down about 10 degrees Obviously, it depends if it's under pressure, blah, blah, blah. But um, I've got that in also. I'd like it to last a while. And so, uh, yeah, I've got my ice in a separate bag because that's just ice from the tap water. Well, okay, so um, the water is running. And um, so the temperature, I've got a little temperature gauge. And 
I'll try to keep everything in centigrade, except for this. It says it is about 55 degrees. I don't know, what is that, about um, 17 degrees centigrade? So, um, okay, in fact, the temperature on the young hen right now, it says it um, was 15 or 16, now it's 14.4. So the water pump has cooled it down. It's going through here. And the pressure detector, or I should say the temperature um, sensor, um, is right there on the head. So, yeah, a little bit about this. Okay, we got um, the oil that goes in there. You need to change your cap when you put in to the breather cap. Um, you can see the oil pressure down there. It should be about midway on the glass Indicator is a red dot that shows up on that. Um, this is the first stage of compression um, for your piston. Um, and then in the middle of that piston is one about the size of a pencil, about four inches long. And it goes to the second stage where it gets the super high pressure. So that's where we're looking to get our 4500 is over in this compartment. Now, some of these that you get for 250, they don't have these stainless steel to recirculate the water in a more efficient way. They just leave these off, save you $100, don't you know? They might not even have a good shipping case for this. It might come kind of damaged sometimes. So um, I went ahead and got more like the $350 model and uh, it does have the extra cooling rods in there. So those stainless steel cooling rods definitely help to keep it a little bit cooler. They say you can go up to 65 degrees centigrade. Well, I'm gonna try for more like 55. Run it for 15 to 20 minutes, um, shut it off, let it cool down a little bit for 5 or 10 minutes, and then kind of run it some more. Obviously, if I'm doing a small tank, no problemo. If I'm doing a big tank, depending on how low it was, then yeah, it's going to take more time to charge it up. If I got to go from like um, 2,000 to 4,000 PSI on a 85 cubic feet tank. Um, well, what else? Well, this comes with a, I guess we can call it a cigarette filter. I think I have um, a handful of them here. Well, more than a handful. I got some extras. You know, they'll give you some. And I thought, yeah, if a few is good, more will be better so they can change them frequently. But, uh, you know, for that as your only line of defense, I'm just not so sure. You know, you've unscrews here. Make sure you get everything tight in the whole system. But, um, yeah, you unscrew it. And um, after you get through using it, you take a look at the end, and if you see a lot of oil and moisture, yeah, it's probably not catching everything. And you want it to go into your tanks. You want it to go into your paintball gun or your rifles or whatever. I don't think so. So I went with a secondary and a tertiary type of filters. So um, this is what they call as a coalescing tower. Basically, the air goes out of the young hen, goes in here and um, it goes down to the bottom. Hopefully it evaporates or it's collected and there is a bleed valve there. And then it comes out and goes into the next system, which is your more typical um, organic sieve. And um, this has three stages on this one. So it has two desiccants and one charcoal. So um, yeah, that's kind of as a backup. And then when it comes out here, it goes out and into the tank. Um, this is a one-way valve, by the way. I went ahead and went all out and thought, you know, if something bursts or whatever, I don't want all the air out of my tank to be going all over the place. You know, this has got a lot of volume. It could be um, a missile. So we want to be very careful with it safety-wise. <laughs> So I have a one-way valve, so air cannot go back this way. And I actually have a bleed valve. You can't get an eighth-inch bleed valve. So I goes from one-way valve up to a half-inch and then kind of back on down. But I have a bleed valve here as well as the one that's on the tank. And, of course, we have the bleed valve over here on the coalescing tower as well. Oh, but wait, there's more. There's some on the young hand, too, as we'll talk about now. So when I started, I like to do like some of the more advanced people do, which is to open the bleed valves, then start without having pressure, close the bleed valves, start watching the pressure. Right here is where we have it. You have a, um, a shutoff valve if you have the 
um, one with the extra features and don't have the shutoff valve operate every time. I would have the shutoff valve set to about 45, 4600 uh, PSI, watching it, always shut it off manually before it gets to that spot. And when I say shut it off manually, I don't just shut off the switch. I open the bleed valves again a little bit to get the pressure off of it, then turn it off and then close the main valve on your um, tank. And then you can close everything down here. I think it may have less back pressure that would have a chance to get into your system. But as I said, I've got the one-way valve, so I'm just telling you, your mileage may vary. Oh, by the way, um, economics. Um, you know, my scuba tank shop is only about four miles away. I didn't know that when I got this stuff, but um, to charge my big tank, they charge $5. Some people have to go an hour or more, so the economics is driving back and forth if they do it every week or two. Um, not a good proposition. I suppose I could have just go to the scuba tank shop, $5, get me. They probably won't go 4500 but when I did the initial fill, rather than to start from scratch with my young hen, they uh, got me up to about, you know, better part of 4000 PSI. So that would certainly be an economic way to go, wouldn't it? My paintball shop, by the way, um, the field, they don't charge anything. Some of them charge 5 or $10, which is great that mine is there. But, you know, I don't go there every week. Right now, it's kind of rainy season. So I want a backup source if I'm practicing, um, doing some target practice and the like around home. So that's some things to consider as you're buying your gear. Um, okay, um, oil. I like, once again, the Royal Purple Company and the Sin Film reciprocating 100 uh, is my oil of choice you can get the hydraulic number 46 if they recommend with this that stuff is stinky <laughs> you know if you've got like a john deere tractor or i don't know some some heavy gear out in the field where you don't smell it that much fine um, you're certainly not going to be using it if you're going to be going scuba diving and i wouldn't even do it with this there is some other if you go to scuba um, oil for um, what you want to run your compressor. It's about $100 a gallon. And I'm sure that the products are there are superior to this in terms of breathability. This, though, in terms of having high viscosity is wonderful. If you look at some YouTube videos, you'll find that um, it's great. And a lot of the people who have studied this and want less wear and tear. What happens when the lubricant film fails? These peaks begin to hit each one, uh, one another and break each other off. Next thing you know, you have metal floating around within your sump. They're reattaching uh, to other areas. You're getting vibration buildup. This is the beginning of the end to your equipment. That's friction, that's heat. That's your additive, your oil actually oxidizing. That's the creation of sludge and varnish. Now I want you to listen and I want you to watch the amp meter. I'm gonna start with one plate because we know that the product will run that way. You hear that? The Royal Purple product actually went through the existing lubricant, sought out the metal with its ionic charge, and formed its own film. We've turned the, the bearing to a fresh spot. We're gonna take our sump. We're gonna add Royal Purple. Again, this is one third the viscosity of the competitive product. Flip our switch, we have a film running. We add the first plate, we're still at five amps. We're gonna add the second plate, we're still at five amps. Now this is where the competitive product failed. So I'm gonna stop it right here and just show you the scar for comparative reasons. Remember the original scar, four seconds, three plates. That's with Royal Purple. You do have a steel crankcase running on aluminum piston and there is gonna be some wear. So um, I did take a look after the first um, run for an hour or two, and it might, it was fine. There was no um, oxides or things that I found in it, no metal flakes. Yeah, you can see a little bit of bubbles and some impurities, nothing much sticking to the bottom that really shows, but um, yeah, it doesn't um, look that bad. It doesn't look that dirty to me. It just looks purple, just like it did before. Uh, what I do, by the way, is I have exactly 10 ounce uh, bottle, which is what this takes. So I take it one of these big bottles, 
put it in the 10 ounce bottle and um, off I go after I've changed it. So anything else? I think we are ready to go ahead and fire it up, which is what you're waiting for. So let's see what happens.